the spectrum of a matrix sigma of A is the set of eigenvalues of A. And again, the spectral radius rho of A is the largest magnitude eigenvalue which is equal to max of mod lambda where lambda belongs to sigma of A. So this is just writing the spectral radius in terms of sigma of A. Another small point to note is that if AX equals lambda X, then A times CX is equal to lambda times CX for any zero not equal to C belonging to some complex space. And so basically if X is an eigenvector, So is Cx for any C not equal to zero. Okay, so now the other thing is, uh, which will sort of lead us to the characteristic polynomial and studying it in, is that um, given any polynomial, So let's say P of T, A K T power K plus A K minus one T power K minus one plus A zero. This is a polynomial in T. And um, A in C to the N cross N. Okay, so we can define P of A, this is the polynomial evaluated at a matrix valued point A. So we'll define it as AK times A power K plus A, A K minus one, A power K minus one plus A zero identity matrix, otherwise you can't add it to these terms. So this is how we define the polynomial evaluated at a matrix. Now, this P of A, um, it will always have the same eigenvectors as the matrix A itself, and the polynomials, uh, the, the eigenvalues of P of A, P of A is an N cross N matrix, because this is N cross N, this is N cross N, this is N cross N, when you add up all these terms, you'll get an N cross N matrix. And its eigenvalues are closely related to the eigenvalues of A itself. And so that is the following theorem. Yes? Sir, not updated, sir. Can somebody else confirm? Uh, it is getting updated for me, sir. Yeah, maybe you know, if it just wait for a second, if it doesn't update, then just drop off and join again. You should see the new screen. The uh, polynomial. Okay, and if lambda is an eigenvalue, a and x is a corresponding eigenvector then p of lambda is an eigenvalue of P of A and 
and x is an eigenvector of p of a associated with Uh, the eigenvalue p of lambda. Okay, so how do we show this? This is very simple. So if I take p of a times x, this is going to be equal to a k a power k x plus a k minus 1 a power k minus 1 x plus etc plus a 0 times the identity times x which is equal to x. Now of course a power j times x is equal to a power j minus 1 times a x which is equal to lambda a power j minus 1 times x and so we can keep going like this go to j minus 2 and so on and so this is going to be equal to lambda power j times x okay <clears throat> so that means that p of a times x is equal to, so it becomes lambda power k times x here and lambda power k minus 1 times x here and so on. So it becomes a k lambda power k x plus a k minus 1 lambda power k minus 1 x plus etc plus a 0 times x and x is multiplying all these terms so I can pull it out and write this as a k lambda power k plus a k minus 1 lambda power k minus 1 plus etc plus a 0 times x and this is nothing but p of lambda. This polynomial evaluated at the number lambda times x. So we see that p of a times x equals p of lambda times x this is an n cross n matrix. This times x equals, this is a scalar. So p of lambda times x, which means that p of lambda is an eigenvalue of a and the corresponding eigenvector is x. Uh, p of lambda is an eigenvalue of p of a and the corresponding eigenvector is x. So based on this, so for example, if, um, sigma of a were the two values say minus 1 and 2 then what is sigma of a square a is a 2 cross 2 matrix it has two eigenvalues minus 1 and 2 so sigma of a square will be lambda 1 squared and lambda 2 squared which is equal to 1 and 4. And as I already mentioned to you earlier, A is singular. If and only if zero is part of sigma of A. Because if A is singular, if and only if AX equals zero for some non-zero X, which means, which is true if and only if lambda equal to zero is an eigenvalue. Sir, yes. So in the above example, uh, the polynomial is p x equals x square, right? Correct. Oh, thank you. Okay. So now let's discuss this characteristic polynomial in some more detail.
So this basically we answer questions about the eigenvalues of A and for example, how many eigenvalues does an N cross N matrix have and when will it have N linearly independent eigenvectors? Okay, so those are the type of questions we want to answer. So the characteristic polynomial, we'll define it in a slightly different way from what I said earlier. It's just a change of sign. We'll define it to be PA of T, which is equal to determinant of TI minus A. Okay, this is a polynomial of degree N. And its roots are the eigenvectors. Uh, eigenvalues. So why is this a polynomial of degree n? It's because if I think of it, I mean, I'll just write it for the two cross two case so that you see what happens. This matrix will look like T minus A11, minus A12, minus A21, and uh, T minus A22. And uh, if I take this determinant, it will be equal to T minus A11, T minus A22, minus A21, A12. And so you can see that this is a quadratic polynomial. So in the uh, n cross n case, by similarly uh, writing it out, you will see that it has to be a polynomial of degree n. The coefficient of t is always 1. So it, when I take the determinant of this, I cannot suddenly get a May a polynomial whose degree is n minus 1. It will always be of degree n. So there is a what is known as the fundamental theorem of algebra. We will not uh, prove this here. We will take it on faith. But it says that Any polynomial of degree n and complex coefficients or with complex coefficients has exactly n zeros counting multiplicities. Okay, so multiplicity just simply means how many times a particular lambda occurs as a zero of um, PA, PA of lambda. So uh, if you count multiplicities, then there are exactly n eigenvalues. So for example, the n cross n identity matrix has exactly n eigenvalues, all are equal to one. Now, because, Sir. yes. Sir, complex coefficients means a real also is included. Yes. Okay. Now, um, suppose we let um, lambda 1 through lambda n be the eigenvalues of A, where repeated eigenvalues are okay, they're just counted as lambda 1, lambda 2 up to n. So, so let lambda 1, lambda n uh, be the eigenvalues of A. Counting multiplicities. The n eigenvalues of A counting multiplicities. Then these are the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. So we can write PA of T equals T minus lambda 1, T minus lambda 2, T 
phi minus lambda n. Okay, so this is a factorized form of the characteristic polynomial. And this polynomial is identical to this determinant of ti minus a. So in particular, if I look at the coefficient of t to the n minus 1 in this polynomial, that's just the sum of the eigenvalues. And similarly, if I look at the coefficient of t power 1 here, you can see that it's just going to be t power 1 will be minus a11 minus a22. And uh, the coefficient of t power n minus 1 here will be minus of lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus etc. up to lambda n. So uh, those two coefficients must match if the polynomials are, if we say two polynomials are equal, it means that the coefficients of t power n, t power n minus 1, all the way down to t power 0 must match. Uh, t power n obviously matches because the coefficient of t squared is 1. And here also when I take the coefficient of t squared in the two dem in the lambda 1, lambda 2 case, that will also be equal to 1. But uh, basically, if I look at what happens to the coefficient of t to the n minus 1 here, it's going to be equal to a11 plus a22, which is the coefficient, which is equal to, which must equal lambda 1 plus lambda 2, which is the coefficient of t to the n minus 1 here. So basically, we, and similarly, if I take the constant term here, that's the product of these eigenvalues, and the constant here here is going to be, uh, all I have to do is the, the constant term will be obtained by setting t equal to 0 in, in this p a of t. And uh, so the constant term is just nothing but the determinant of the matrix A. So the product of the eigenvalues equals the determinant and the sum of the eigenvalues equals the trace of the matrix. So that's the following theorem. If lambda 1 through lambda n are the eigenvalues of A, So the determinant of A is the product of the eigenvalues and the trace of A is the sum of the eigenvalues. So just to maybe make it clear, if you look at the, if I set t equals 0 here, what I get is minus lambda 1 into minus lambda 2 up to minus lambda n, which is minus 1 power n times the product of the eigenvalues. If I set t equals 0 here, I will get determinant of minus A which is again going to be equal to minus 1 power n times determinant of a. Those two must be equal and therefore minus 1 power n cancels with minus 1 power n and what you're left with is determinant of a is the product of the eigenvalues. And similarly, if I look at the coefficient of t power n minus 1 here, it's going to be minus lambda 1 minus lambda 2 up to minus lambda n. And here, if I look at the coefficient of t power n, t power 1, I have a11 plus minus of a11 plus a22, and which is nothing but the negative trace of the matrix. So negative trace of the matrix is the same as the negative sum of the eigenvalues. And so we have this part here. So for the sake of completeness, I'll just say here, coefficient of t to the n minus 1. And this is obtained by looking at the coefficient of t power 0. or the constant term. Or the other way is set t equals 0 in OK, so there are a couple of other results. Um, Before that, maybe I'll just uh, write this one thing out, which is uh, 
what is the procedure to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors?